Hello and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll recap the final week in a regular season play for the Ferris State men's basketball, women's basketball, and hockey squads as all three get set for the postseason. We'll start first, though, with men's basketball, joined by head coach Andy Brockham. Coach, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This past weekend, obviously, uh, kind of nice to be back at home after playing four straight on the road uh, to round out the regular season. Yeah, it definitely showed. I mean, we played well um, coming back home, and uh, we spent a lot of energy on those road trips, being away from home, and you know, just trying to do our studies and, and prepare on the road and in the hotels. And it was fun to be with the team and be with the guys um, on those trips, but it takes a lot out of you, and it was good to, good to come back. As we go to some of the highlights, we'll get started on Thursday night, and obviously a, an impressive performance as you put up 117 points against Purdue Northwest and really got off to a fast start. Real fast start. I mean, it was just one of those nights where everything was going in, and the basket looked real big, and, um, you know, like I said, we, we just caught a little rhythm and a little flow, and all, all of our shots were going in. You know, Noah was, was on fire early and late, and, you know, the, the starters didn't miss a shot um, in the whole first half, which is crazy. I mean, I don't, I don't expect that to ever happen again. I hope it does, but just something that you don't see. And uh, you know, I think it was a perfect storm of just us being more relaxed to come back home. And they played us so tough at their place. You know, we had, you know, healthy respect for them and we were ready to go. Able to uh, come close to setting uh, several school records here in this game, 117 points, had 64 in the first half and obviously some incredible shooting figures uh, starting to line up, uh, shot over 90% for the ball game. Yeah, nights like this, you're just probably not going to be beat uh, when everything's rolling and uh, we've had a couple of these in the last few years and we'd like to have more, but probably a lot of teams go down. Um, on, on a night like this, so different teams have them, and this is one of our days where everything was going in. One of those games where uh, not only did you have an opportunity to get off to a, a big lead, uh, you brought the guys in off the bench, and they uh, continued to play well. And uh, you know that's our expectation. You know we expect them to play well. We expect them to um, be ready when their number is called, and we expect them to carry the traditions on in the future. Um, it, it, you know, the, it's the near future by getting into this game or, you know, a little later on next year or the year after. You know, those guys got to carry the torch and they practice hard and they have skills. So when they get in there, our expectations are high for them. And they did just what you said. They, they went in and stayed in our system and made a few good plays. Seven players reaching double figure scoring here in the game. And uh, certainly after this game, able to cut down the nets, celebrating uh, another GLIAC championship. And I know that was special. It was special. And, uh, we don't want to take it for granted at all. We just want to cherish it. And it's fun to share it with these guys and share it with the community and uh, cut that net up and give it to people that uh, want a piece of it. 117 uh, points uh, in that contest, but uh, didn't have a whole lot of time to really uh, reflect on that one and, and cutting down the net. You had Grand Valley State coming to town on Saturday in a tough game against the Lakers. Yeah, we're just going to have to do a great job of reflecting after the season because there's so many things happening so fast that, you know, we're just going to have to look at all your releases. We're going to have to look back at the, at the Twitter page and just remember, oh, that, that happened, that happened, and enjoy it. But quick turnaround, rivalry game, you know, you're putting that one behind you quick, and, you know, you're literally back in the office printing out the box score of the next team and diving into the film that night. So you turn the page fast, and that's what we're trained to do. So it's, it's not that hard, but, um, you know, you, you go on and you start thinking about that next opponent quick. Obviously a tremendous crowd on hand, more than 2,000 people uh, here for this rivalry game and a little bit different uh, type of pace uh, here in the early going in the first half. They did a great job of executing their game plan. You know, both teams had shots rim in and out. That's uh, two blocks in these highlights by Cush. It's nice to have the point guard to come over and be able to do that. Pretty amazing. But um, they controlled the tempo. Uh, we had some shots rim out, but so did they. And we couldn't get the press going, but, you know, the game stayed close. And in the second half, we were able to get up and down a little bit and you know, make some plays like that. Two-point difference uh, here in the first half as you took the lead into the locker room at halftime. But as you mentioned, a tight first half, you were able to make some key plays uh, early in the second half. You know, these guys just kept, kept grinding at it and uh, you know, played pretty good defense. Um, held them below their season percentages, and they held us well below ours, too. So it was a defensive battle, a little slower game. but. We got our pace going in a couple stretches in the second half, and that, that helped. The crowd helped, and uh, you know, Grand Valley's just got good players, and they had a good game plan. And you know, overall, we were just able to get them out of it just enough to take it home for a victory. 
Drew Kirshenberry on senior day uh, led the way with 17 points, but uh, he got some key contributions off the bench. Cole Walker in double figures uh, both games this past weekend. Yep, Cole, he's, he can play offense, and he just keeps getting better and better. And uh, our expectations are extremely high for Cole. And uh, I mean, just probably too high at, at some times, you know, but we're just trying to push him along um, as quick as possible because he's going to be a big cog. Um, you know, minutes are probably going to double next year. So not sure if that was a foul or not. I think Hank should have been a little more disciplined, just let him go. But uh, yeah, this, this is just a fun game to play in, man. You look forward to these. Our guys look forward to them. I know the other team looks forward to it. It's just an exciting atmosphere and a good rivalry. There's Cole again stepping up with, with Hank and foul trouble. Nice to have a two guard that can make a steal and make a play like that too with, with, with Peter. So I'm just impressed, every day impressed with our guys, with our players. It's exciting. You mentioned uh, Peter Furlick, uh, senior Noah King, Drew Cushingberry, uh, you had Taekwon Greer, Greg Kruzniak, five seniors. Uh, just talk about what they meant being honored on senior day. Well, it was emotional. I mean, they, they mean a lot and you just, you just love them a lot and that's all there is to it. it it's something that uh, just goes by quickly. You know, when you look at senior day, it feels like just yesterday they were coming in and uh, you know, those guys are special to the program and, you know, they're part of the fraternity now and it's still, you know, it's, it's not an ending. It's just a beginning. You know, we got postseason play and I'm excited for all the postseason play here with, with hockey and women's basketball. I mean, it's, it's an exciting time of year and we're looking for some, you know, some of our teams to make long runs. You opened the GLIAC tournament, the number one seed this week, hosting Saginaw Valley State. Uh, talk about the opponent on Wednesday night here in the quarterfinal round. Well, we've played two pretty good games against them. So, um, you know, I look at where they're powerful and I see talented players and some scary things that we're going to have to defend well. They're well coached. They fought their way into the tournament. And, you know, I, I expect it to be a good game. Tournament basketball, it's one notch above the regular season. So we'll have to be ready for that. And I know Saginaw is going to give it everything they have. Well, Coach, congratulations again on a fantastic regular season, 29-1, and GLIAC champions, and looking forward to the start of postseason play. Me too. Thanks, Robert. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.